Paul? Well, I, I think you've heard a lot of the same, this new found focus on the user, uh, which is kind of what it was all supposed to be about. And uh, if we keep focused on that, it'll drive us to the convergence across these these, these sort of the ven of identity starting from three different corners, it's, it's a focus on make it simple for the <coughs> user. A lot of people say, you know, we should build technologies that are simple for the developer. That's ridiculous. No one ever built a car because it was easy to engineer. Uh, so what we're finding is the way to get traction, all of us are finding, is delight and surprise the end user with something cool and new. So what's happening in the world of cards is we introduce this new old metaphor of cards in a wallet. People get that really quickly, but that's just the tech. What can you do with it? And we're finding things that are surprising in the ecosystem. We're, we, a whole new kind of card has sprung up called an action card that doesn't rely on a relying party. It's just the card issuer issues this card, puts it into your machine, and because it's in the machine and knows something about you, for instance, uh, AAA in the Washington region is going to launch on May a card, an action card. When you put this action card into this selector, it knows you're a member of AAA. When you search on the, on the Google or Yahoo search engines, it annotates that with web augmentation right on your machine, um, advertising the ways you can save money. You know, we never mention this as identity technology. We talk about new user uh, experience. So I, I'm, I'm delighted that, that we, I feel like we've got enough tech, and <laughs> <laughs> now if we just stay uh, faithful to focusing on, on the user experience, we will be dragged kicking and streaming, screaming into the, the convergence of these uh, technologies, because no one technology does it all. I wish I could say card solves all problems, but you still need SAML, you still need OpenID, and so on. But forget that. Just focus on something cool. You know, we're finding, as I said, this you know, surprising new areas, loyalty programs, saving money. Uh, who would have thought that's where we'd be? Okay. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit, uh, Paul, on some of the commercial uh, card providers? On, in so triple, what? AAA is, is one. Before that, we did a, one with Student Advantage, another kind of discount program. Uh, Craig and his wife started a thing called Schwaver Card. He's sitting up here, which is in the social responsibility space. You know, I'm happy to say I had nothing to do with this. These, these innovations just spring up. We do have traditional authentication work. The GSA is back there with a, uh, a demonstration. Another government-related uh, effort is the Minuteman Library Network in the Massachusetts area is starting to use information cards as a way to log in. Um, but uh, what was also said earlier by a number of us is we're moving beyond just authentication to attributes. And ultimately, I'm sure Eve would agree, we want to get to permission to attribute sharing. I mean, this authentication is just this sort of uh, one of the use cases, right? And, and one of the things I like about cards is that any card can have an arbitrary set of attributes. And you can not just sign in, but you can present them. Oh, and the card doesn't have to be what you say about yourself. It can be, for instance, with the demo with GSA, it's what Equifax says about you is what signs you into the GSA site. Mm -hmm. So I think across the panel, we're seeing authentication, attribute, you know, things like OAuth allow permissioned attribute exchange. And it's not the only technology even in that space. Excellent. Thank you. Um, what I'd like to find out now a little bit more about is, is we all heard about how this is not a technology game, right? How, how this is beyond uh, protocols working together. Um, I'd like to get your opinion in, in any order, but I want to get everybody's opinion, right, on how you can foster collaboration between enterprises um, and and. That's part of the question. And also, what are the commercial models? What are the cost and, and, and benefits mo benefit models for your, uh, for your technologies that will uh, make it basically commercially viable uh, in the future? So there's two questions, right? Commercial viability and, and basically building relationships. And um, whoever wants to go first. E? Maybe I can speak as the SAML lady here. Um. I've been working with SAML for, what was it somebody pointed out, a thousand years or something earlier <laughs> today? Okay. Um, but, you know, actually, this is an opportunity to plug a Concordia survey that's going on right now online um, on Identity Federation. And one of the things we realized in putting together this quick five minute survey, if you go to projectconcordia.org, you'll find it, is we notice that there's a number of different ways to characterize federated identity setups, you know, from the 
pairwise, just two, maybe two businesses doing business together as a joint venture or outsourcing or something. There are circles of trust that are sort of tightly composed. There's um, more uh, loosely coupled or more loosely organized federations. There's open internet usage of federated identity. And so one of the questions that we posed in the survey is, well, which one or ones are you doing and sort of how important is it to you? How much are you doing of it? And I think that, you know, SAML's got long experience at being used, I would say, first in the pairwise circumstance, but we've been getting better and better at understanding what's needed for the more loosely organized circles of trust and how you can make those more dynamic. And I think that's actually a very exciting direction to go for federation in general. Mm -hmm. Great. Roger? Well, it, I mean, I'll give a consulting answer. It's sort of it depends, right? <laughs> it, it depends, as, as uh, uh, Eve was saying, on the style of the implementation that a deployer has done, whether it's a hub and spoke or whether it's a peer-to-peer -peer or, you know, a, a, a multi-peer environment. There's a lot of good material on the project.liberty, excuse me, projectliberty.org website, a lot of resource material that describes many of the different approaches for deploying these technologies. And again, it, it depends. It can be customer retention or customer capture, which is much easier in a peer-to-peer -peer federated environment, say in a financial institution, the classic example of the 401k, uh, versus in a retail environment where I want my suppliers to be able to tap into uh, survey information that's coming in about a particular technology widget that's on sale. So I want the supplier of that technology to be able to see the survey results if I'm the retailer delivering it. And future think, a lot of the people who will fill out those surveys, who will blog about that, are people who are very adept at social media. And we don't know what the ROI of that is. The social media capture to a str more strongly authenticated perhaps SAML uh, protocol. So there are, it's very early on to pick an ROI that's going to uh, be the one size fits all answer. But again, I'd recommend going on to the site and looking, looking at the case studies that are there, as well as some of the uh, deployment guidelines and, and uh, uh, models. 